Hi, I'm Mike Prashan, and one of the courses that I teach here at McEwen is Introduction to Film Narrative. And one of the concepts we talk about in this course is cinematic language. And I want to introduce you to the concepts of cinematic language, which will, might, you know, increase your appreciation of films. And I'm going to use the first 10 minutes of Raiders of the Lost Ark as my case study. So let's get started. The first concept that I want to give you from cinematic language is a French term called mise en scène. We would refer to this as production design or costume design. This refers to all of the ways in which the set is built and the costumes that the actors uh, wear. So let's start with a costume. Let's take a look at Indiana Jones's costume. Two aspects of it, the hat and the leather jacket, those are pretty iconic. And both of them were brand new when the uh, costumers got their hands on them. And then they just... they scrunched up the hat and they ran it through the dirt and they took the jacket and they took a pen knife to it and they distressed it to give the impression about Indiana Jones that he's not just a bookish archaeologist who stays in the classroom and does what I do, um, but that he's out there adventuring. It shows that this, this clothing is lived in and that this guy lives a wild and crazy life. So it tells us something about the characters and co good costuming always should. What do the sets tell us? Well, in the first 10 minutes of Indiana Jones, the sets are built in this way that feels like an homage to the serials, the adventure serials that this movie uh, is inspired by. These were movies, uh, they were sort of like, almost like, precursors to TV shows because they were episodic. You get 20 minutes of them each week at the cinema. Um, and they were made on the cheap. They were made for very, very little money. And so it wasn't that in the 1980s they couldn't build realistic looking temple sets. It's that I think this temple set is supposed to look like it's built out of polystyrene, which is why the rocks on the side look a little bit fakey. That brings us to cinematography, which is that the camera is picking up that fake aspect. They could have covered that up. They could have covered up those kind of like little... Uh, inconsistencies in the way that the set was built but as I say I think that was one of the intentions of the film cinematography is the uh, art of capturing all of the stuff that's on the set and in the costumes and the performances that the actors bring and one of the things that we see about cinematography in the first moments of the film is that Indiana Jones is shot in silhouette we don't know who he is at the beginning. We don't see who he is. And even if you knew who Harrison Ford was at the time, he wasn't a huge movie star like he became later on. And so there's this mystery about who Indiana Jones is. And the camera holds him in silhouette, making us wonder who this guy really is. The other thing that the camera focuses on is Indiana Jones' uh, sidekicks. And he's got two in particular that the camera keeps looking at. One in particular being Alfred Molina, who would go on to become a pretty big name in film. And the camera focuses on him when Indiana Jones opens up this uh, map. And we see his expression. And his expression tells us how we, as the audience, ought to be feeling at this particular point in the film. He's got this look of like confusion. But it also signals that he and the other sidekick are up to no good. Um, and when that other sidekick gets dealt with, which we'll talk about in just a moment, he's got this look of awe about Indiana Jones. He's measuring him differently. When they enter the temple and they get into this situation with these spiders, Sapito, uh, the, the character that Alfred Molina plays, gets covered in spiders. He's got this look of fear on his face. And the look of, of utter terror that he has on his face is genuine, apparently, because he was really uncomfortable about having these spiders on him, and then they weren't moving, and so they introduced a female to the entire situation and that got all the spiders moving and so that that at that point is not acting but acting is always about ensuring that the performer is letting us know as the audience what we ought to be feeling at certain points in the movie there's a jump scare in this sequence and it might not really scare us because uh, that's the sort of thing that that changes over time we don't get scared by the same sorts of things that previous generations did but we are told by Sapito's expression, by Alfred Molina's face, how we're supposed to be feeling in that moment. And then we get this great moment where he keeps mirroring through his actions what Indiana Jones is doing. And this moves us from acting to editing. This is what we call cross-cutting, moving back and forth between two positions within the film. And it doesn't necessarily have to be in the same location. In the movie Interstellar, the, uh, there's cross-cutting that's between people on completely different planets. So cross-cutting in this sequence moves back and forth between Harrison Ford as Indiana Jones and Alfred Molina as Sapito to give a sense of tension that just focusing on Indiana Jones wouldn't necessarily give. And we can understand this further by taking a look at a sequence when Indiana Jones is betrayed by one of his sidekicks. This all happens shot by shot, but it happens so quickly that we don't really think of these as individual shots. 
we think of them as one seamless action, but this is all broken up into different camera positions, different actions, potentially stunt performers, and not actually Harrison Ford. And what's great about editing is that it can pull all of these things together and you get this moment where the whip is cracked forward and the, and the, the sidekick reacts. That sidekick reacting there would have been no bullwhip involved. He's just doing that. The camera's on his face and then it cuts away to where we see the bullwhip and then the gun falling into the water. Now, when the gun falls into the water, there's the sound of a gunshot going off. But if you pay close attention to the film, the gun doesn't actually go off here, but the sound makes us think it does. And this is the last part of cinematic language is sound. When Indiana Jones presses down, and what is clearly a built set, and that's probably not stone. We hear this sound of stone grating on other stone. When the arrow emerges from this, this, uh, this statue on the side of the temple, there's this puff of air. And then when the arrow hits the torch, it makes this very cartoony doing kind of sound. It doesn't really happen when a dart hits anything in real life. It just sort of makes a really disappointing thunk sound. But sound in cinema is usually quite distinct from the sound that we hear in the real world. And finally, of course, sound always makes us think of music. And some of the greatest movies, uh, movie soundtracks ever made are for films that if you took that music out, really wouldn't be as good. I mean, can we really imagine Raiders of the Lost Ark being great without John Williams' fanfare? Dun, 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 right? So this is cinematic language. And great cinematic language, when it's all combined, when everybody does their job and does it well, we end up with a classic movie like Raiders of the Lost Ark.